Hello, and welcome to another episode of me being an idiot, talking about D&D stuff and making a map for you guys, giving some ideas. Yes, of course. It'll never change. <laughs> uh, except for weird stuff. I mean, I like D&D. You wouldn't be watching this unless you didn't like D&D. I mean, it's, it is what it is. Thank you for uh, being here, I guess. Today, as you've probably seen from the <laughs> the title right right below, right down there, uh, we'll be doing a Cloaker episode. Cloakers have earned their name for the resemblance they bear to dark, leathery cloaks. Lurking in remote dungeons and caves, stealthy predators wait to slay lone or injured prey stumbling through the darkness. So, we'll literally be creating a dungeon. Keep in mind, it'll most likely be a single room instance, or more likely a set of small rooms in a particular dungeon. It, it's it's going to continue to be the 25 by 25. We're going to keep with the mountain for the cave dungeons. It's going to be the default small, so that way you don't have to worry about the rescaling and sizing if you go to the maps. Uh, if you wish for a larger version, you can always scale things up, scale things down with it. I mean, do your own with it. Uh, if it is requested, I may do larger maps. We'll just see what happens. Keep in mind, I've noticed the file size is just over 4 megabytes. So, if you're using the free, I believe it only lets you have one. So, you'd have to compress the file size using a... Uh, picture editor just to reduce the uh, resolution a little bit or the pixels or the uh, color definition I mean it'll, be, it'll do fine it'll do fine now the big things about a cloaker they have four things camouflage lurkers optimistic predators in other words ambushing after the fact so they're good flankers they have a haunting moan and they cloaker conclaves Cloakers prefer isolation, so let's start with that one, the, on the conclaves. But sometimes they convene with other cloakers for defense or to exchange information about new dangers, suitable hunting grounds, or developments that might affect their habits. When this convergence is complete, the cloakers separate once again. So we could turn this into a conclave. For example, they are traveling either in the Underdark or they're traveling inside of a dungeon. Uh, cloakers do have the ability, they have two languages, they have deep speech and undercommon, their intelligence and wisdom, but 13 and 12, respectively. So, they can communicate, so it's not entirely against the rules to have cloakers talk. They are chaotic neutral, after all, but chaotic means they do what they want to do. They, if they see an opportunity, they'll take it. They are large aberrations, keep that in mind. So... I believe they can unfurl due to their camouflage lurkers. They can uh, unfurl their body, hide their tail, and go to about a medium size if they tuck everything in. So you can say that there's a, a few cloaks as you walk into a room. You notice odd square sy uh, symbols etched into the floor. You notice alongside the uh, walls to the left and to the right of you, it seems to be a series of wooden stakes protruding from the wall, and each one of these wooden stakes is a leather, dark brown, dark black leather cloak, a couple of them gray in appearance, not exactly one ex particularly the same as the other. Then you can have, as the player characters come and touch one, they realize nothing being amiss. Everything seems fine. Maybe a little bit heavier than usual. They put it on. They get on the equipment. And then, oh, that attacks their damage transfer special ability. While attached to a creature, the cloaker only takes half damage dealt to it, rounded down. And the creature that's attached to you takes half. So you can keep a cloaker on a party. You can say, oh, uh, it's apparently giving you resistance to all damage. Just pretend to get somebody on that. But it's heavier than usual for some reason. Uh, it doesn't feel magical. It's made by a special kind of leather. Unless they inspect it carefully. That's where cloakers come in handy. For new players who... Or new game masters who want to give a nice little surprise to experienced players. New and experienced. I mean, when I first saw this and I saw the damage transfer, I thought, oh my gosh. Oh, that's my bad. I tried to put my phone on mute. Spam callers calling me earlier this morning. <laughs> Well then, let's continue. Again, unedited. Apologies for that. No. 
All right. The colonic. No. I know who you are. Go away. I don't care for your insurance. <laughs> Professionalism. Phone. Yes. So let's. We've got the map. Let's let's start. Let's start in the general sense. So we've, we're going to have a conclave. Yes. So we need to have maybe a cave floor. Maybe, yeah, we can have a cave floor, and then maybe we can uh, tone it down. Maybe go into cobblestones as we get into the actual room. They are intelligent, so they can probably have other species in the area, or they'd be able to handle that. They don't have hands. They have a long tail, which they can use for an attack. They've got the moan, the haunting moan, that can do some uh, serious fright or fight. They got a bite, and they have multi attack. They can do one bite and one tail. Keep in mind, these guys are CR Challenge 8. They have a stealth plus 5. Dark vision, 60 feet, so you can keep them in absolute darkness. It's actually recommended because they have light sensitivity. That's bright light, not sunlight. So you want to keep things dark. Maybe a uh, area of darkness or a uh, magical item in the center of the room, a black orb. As you cross through the threshold, you notice the black orb starts radiating dark mist or a dark cloud of arcane energy as it starts filling out the room. Those kind of ideas are pretty nice. As uh, it is a magical darkness, normal light does not inflict, does not grow. So it would allow the uh, cloakers to get close if they have torches or they're using the light cantrip or the other things. Keep in mind, I believe you could cast sunlight to uh, mess with that a little bit. They have an armor class of 14, so they're actually rather easy to hit. But because of the damage transfer, as I stated earlier, that doesn't matter too much. You can hit it easily. Yes, yes, yes. But you'd be hitting your friends as well. Stop hitting yourself, so to say. They have hit points of a modest 78. But for a challenge rating 8, that's not that good. But it's 12d10 plus 12. Not bad. Speed, 10. Oh, it crawls. But it has the flight speed of a dragon. 40 feet. So that's eight squares. It can get across the room really fast. But let's go ahead and have... Let's go ahead and do the default cave floor for now. Let's say that the adventurers are entering... We need to have it a tall room. Let's have a... Uh, let's, let, let's, let's have them go. Let's do the dungeon approach. Dungeon approach. You want to keep things nice and smooth-walled as you can. Maybe a couple of carvings, yes. And we'll have to fill that out. And it's it's a it's a bit of a a bit of a dead end here. Some uh, collapsed ruins right there. It is being a dungeon. Uh, things continue. Uh, get some of these uh, ninety degree turns right here. Nice little curvature we have there. And uh, let's have let's have like two rooms, I guess. Have a uh, massive room up here. Just, uh, just keeping things interesting. Yeah, so that's, uh, that works pretty good. Keep it, keep the little corners around. Put a uh, door in front of it or leave it wide open. And uh, continue with the end over here, down, into another main chamber. Now... We could probably continue. Yeah, we'll have an ending of it. So this will be kind of like a checkpoint. You'll be traveling along. You'll notice signs of uh, scratching, clawing on the walls and ceiling. The floors are rather untouched as you approach and go down the corridor. Up to the left, it seems to be a dead end as the, uh, the old age of this dungeon or ruin has succumbed and... The roof has collapsed, causing a passion of debris there. You could have a cloaker hiding as a scout in there. This is for higher level parties, keep this in mind. You can run one of them, keep in mind that it's depending on how many magical items and such your party has. Challenge rating 8 may not be that difficult. It's heavy on the offense. Moans there to give everybody that fear. And it's got phantasms. Uh, phantasms. Phantasm, the cloak magically creates three illusionary duplicates of itself if it isn't in bright light. Duplicates move with it and mimic its actions, shifting positions as if to make it impossible to track the, which cloaker is real time. So like a displacer beast. The cloaker is even, if ever in a bright light, the duplicates disappear. Whenever any creature targets the cloaker with an attack or harmful spell, the duplicate remains. 
the creature rolls randomly to determine whether it targets the cloaker or one of the duplicates. So it's more like the wizard's illusion spells, mirror of illusions. A creature is unaffected by the magical effect. If it can't see, it relies on senses other than sight. Duplicate the cloaker AC and uses its saving throws. An attack that hits it, the du uh, hits a duplicate. If the duplicate fails the saving throw against an effect that deals damage, the duplicate disappears. But if it succeeds, the duplicate does not disappear, so that's unique. Again, that would be one of the reasons why there's a challenge rating 8. If you, I would say that a level 10 or a level 11 to 12 party could probably fight 2 to 3 of these. Uh, my party being level 9, I would put them in groups of 2. I would have them fight one to test it, probably over here. Have them do a little fight, drag out a close quarters engagement area. Keep in mind, when it unfurls, it becomes large. Hence the reason why this is two by two. You need to have this cavern be a, a bit of the tall side if you want this thing to have the advantage of flying high. Its tail having a 10-foot reach, it can at least fly, I want to say, if they are 5 foot tall, it can at least fly 15 feet up, forcing enemies to use ranged attacks or to jump and try to leap into people, doing those running jumps. Let's have a, uh, a smaller room. Yes, right around here. You can see directly into it, and it will have an exit, a one by one. And now, let's continue with the two by two. A two by two exit. That could eventually lead it to a one by one. You can mix and match the maps. Uh, again, it's a dungeon. Do what you will. Let us go ahead and, uh, considering it's a dungeon. No, 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 not that one. We're doing edge. Now, we need to do. Yes, this one. Smooth out those rough edges. Go through that. Can't go too fast in the editor. It tends to break. Give the players plenty of room. There's not going to be any overlap. There's not going to be any hidden items. Maybe a couple of pieces of debris that way, but... I'll fix that. Going here. Going down. Yes, going up, going left. Keep that a bit on the rougher side, denoting passage has collapsed. Hmm. I think I'll keep that as it is. A bit on the rougher side there. Go here, go around. Now, cloakers are, uh, again, ambush predators, much like a lot of the creatures that I've been uh, hosting so far. So, you want to take advantage of the corners and whatnot. You want to take advantage of any cracks, any crevices, any lacks in judgment, if they take an area for granted so to say. So maybe we should add a few more of those. Little alcoves. I think we're doing fine with this. Here comes another spam. <laughs> I've got you muted this time. Yeah, this works. So, we've got the basic layout working out, right? So this isn't bad. Hold on. I gotta get that draw there. So, we're done with that. So now we got to say, how what, what would a lurker have? No structures. Maybe it being in a dungeon, we could have, maybe, 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 we can change the floor plan out a little bit, yeah. Uh, have dirt, and then go into, it, it, they are beasts of intelligence. So, it being a dungeon, have it go into the cobblestone path. Go to cobblestone, let's see how this looks. Go to one by one. That's not bad, it's not bad. Hmm, maybe not. Keep it as it is, that may be best. Simplicity sometimes is better on these occasions. But, interior, interior, a hex floor? Doesn't look that bad. Want to go with maybe... It, being an interior... Uh, it, it, they do have intelligence, but they don't touch the floor. 
So it would make sense that they wouldn't upkeep it. Uh, the area would be old. Uh, if it's being a conclave, it's dating earlier. It would be an area for meeting. The walls would be better and kept. Because that would be their mounting. They would care very little for the floor. They'd be flying creatures. They could convene on the floor. But there'd be less need for it. Not space, not black and white, gravel and dirt, no, not nature, stone. Tiles, snow and ice, Half-Life 2, building. Concrete, concrete, dev. Maybe some, no, 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 that looks, that looks downright atrocious. Glass, glass, metal. Citadel, mm. metal, nature. Nature. Half-Life. Yeah, it's one of the mods. Space! We need more space. Stone wall. Marble floor. Stone floor. Ah! That works out actually fairly well. I'll do that. Have the uh, stone floor. Keep in mind, I'll have to redo the corners. But I'm fine with that. Stone it is. Gotta be careful. Go back to a 2x2 two two paint. Paint it there. They'll have the most steady of hands. There we go. Then one more here. I'll have to do that edge again. But this is fine. Uh, they'll happen every now and then when I touch it. Going up and around. Now, again, you can put the cloakers having the claws. Again, you want to just give them like a little bit of a teaser of what they're, they're going to have. Okay, click here. Drag it over. And then do a drag it here. Oh, I missed one. How could I miss one? That's embarrassing. I missed another one! At least it's got the drag tool. Going around. Now, there's nothing that says that cloakers can't have minions of their own. They are beasts of intelligence. So, you can have giant rats being the servants of the denizens within this dungeon. Or whatever dungeon theme, you can have the cloakers be... Guardians or sentries to whatever lich or daemon controls this dungeon. Do as you will. Do as you need. Things always come to pass. I missed one again. Hmm. Good thing I went back over. I would never have seen those. Yeah, that looks much better for a dungeon, does it not? Now, I think we're done with that. Let's go ahead and get my icons. Let's get the icons done. Uh, we're not doing bedrolls. We're not doing sleeping. We're not doing archers. Uh, we're not doing black and white. No space. Bags? We can add that on. Uh, maybe a uh, crushed barrel? No, 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 no. Being inside of a dungeon, there wouldn't be any barrels. Uh, you could have cracks, spider webs. That's not a bad idea. Have a couple of cracks. Claws on the road. Ah. Uh, hmm. Just, uh, give it a few cracks and, uh. Cry. There we go. That looks pretty good. Denoting some debris. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, that's that's like a glass pane. We don't want that. Uh, floor carvings and cracks and, and niches. And a bit of a... Uh, no, 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 no. We don't need to do that. We'd like to get the uh, scratches into it. Going to be like small... Like, around this corridor, as if they were flooding into the area. There'd be small scratches near the, uh, the edges. Yeah. Have it rotate slightly. Have it go it upside down. 
Uh, maybe a different type of scratch. Rotate it around. Just denoting scratches, stuff. Like, it seems like some creatures were in a hurry to get in there. Because I'm assuming, considering how Cloaker is being large and stuff like that, they do not like this, so they'd probably panic trying to peer through. Putting a little bit more detail into the scratches, maybe, perhaps? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, there. Beware the slap. <laughs> Did I get that reference? Please let me know. Beware the slap. I hope I don't get a scratch. Okay. That'll do. A little bit of touch there. Have them rushing out books, bottles, boxes, bridges, coffins, bushes and cacti, not here. Cages. Uh, let's continue reading, shall we? Maybe they'd have something used for a cage, keeping pets. They are intelligent, and speaking of deep speech and utter common, of course. They're camouflaged. Like a stingray, a cloaker's body is composed of cartilage and muscle. With its tail and fins unfurled, it flies through the dark and lurks among the shadows of caverns. In the same way, a stingray glides through the water, hides in the ocean floor. Parallel rows of round black eyes run across its back like buttons. Ivory-colored claws on its cowl resemble bone clasps. When a cloaker unfurls and moves to attack, it reveals its pale underside and makes true nature evident. Red eyes glow above rows of sharp teeth, a long, pendulous tail whips behind it. The opportunistic predators, when hunting, cloakers glide through the air at a safe distance behind groups of other creatures traversing in the underdark. So, this means have them in there. Have them trailing behind. They find they find nothing of interest. Have that room I was standing earlier with the squares. Or have lines of cloaks. Have them gently flow quietly with their plus five to stealth. That's a dexterity of 15. So it's plus five, then plus two. Unless it's Saturday included, which I believe it is not. It could be whatever you want. I, I'm not entirely perfectly sure about how that works. You have them come in there, and then you have the actual fight down here. Cloakers strike quickly and consume their meals as swiftly as possible, enveloping and devouring their victims. While it feeds, the cloaker uses its swift, whip-like tail for defense, although it rarely takes a stand against dangerous foes or groups of creatures. As an added defense, cloakers can create illusionary duplicates, as I stated earlier. The haunting moan. Cloakers... Thoughts are alien to other life forms. They communicate with one another through subsonic moans and audible to most creatures. At higher intensities, Cloaker's haunting mode becomes because uh, audible, invoking sense of doom and dread. That is a 60-foot air of effect moan. DC 13 wisdom saving throw become frightened. If a saving throw is successful, you're immune to it for 24 hours. The tail, 10 reach, plus 6 to hit, does, does a little bit of slashing damage. The bite, oh, the bite is where the danger is. Plus six to hit five feet, one creature. 2d6 plus three. And if the target is large or smaller, it attaches to it. The cloaker has advantage against the target. If the cloaker has advantage, the cloaker attaches to the target's head, and the target is blinded, unable to breathe while the cloaker is attached. While attached, the cloaker can make this attack only against the target as advantage on attack roll. The cloaker can detach itself by spending five feet of its movement. A creature, including the target, can make its action to detach it, succeeding on a DC 16 strength save. So, you can have it distinguished. You can have the false appearance, making it uh, motionless, undistinguishable from a dark leather cloak, letting them put it on themselves. Keep in mind, if they try to inspect it closely, it will attack. Being a surprise attack, you'd have advantage attacking to the head. Having multiple people attacking it at the same time, multiple cloaks, it'd be a ton of fun. I, uh, let's, let's say for a multiplicity's sake that they may have. Maybe nothing too large. There's an Iron Maiden. Uh, rack. It's a bit of a dungeon. So you wouldn't go too crazy with it. No cots, no chairs. They wouldn't so much have loot as they their hide being of the thicker variety would probably be good for making a stealth cloak. Give you a bonus to stealth if you were to skin and hide a cloaker. Probably end up, uh, after reducing all of the... Removing the high, tanning it, all that effects. You probably end up getting a plus two stealth cloak. Uh, you could, if you wish to, make it a little bit more generous. You could use the cloaker's bonus plus five in that as well. 
crafting forges, crates, maybe not. It is being a dungeon. It could be a ton of things in here. Dead bodies? Oh, that's not a bad idea. They would have bones. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. You can leave. What we could do is put a skull, denoting that some poor adventurer passed away. That little corner. You do notice the skull? Oh, that's barely, that's like barely seeable. Let's make the skull huge. There we go. Ah, you can tell that's something. What is that? A white stone? No, it's a skull. Uh, it's easy to be seen. It's easy to do that. Now, let's get some, like, maybe skeletal remains, denoting that it's not the only thing that has roamed in here. Uh, maybe a limb. Mm, I remember going through this not that long ago. Skeleton hole. Have a, a yes, a few skeletons. That denoting the uh, death. Maybe put some rocks in there. X. You gotta rotate it slightly. Um, keep the height. Bonus. Uh, about five feet. Uh, and proliferate the area with uh, some just um, with some generic skulls. Over here to the left. It's their uh, preferred feeding area. A nice little area of darkness. Again, you can continue to use that there be a sphere in the middle right here. That radiates a dark energy, basically literally casting darkness within a sounding area of effect, maybe allowing or alluding and insisting to the cloaker's natural environment. Maybe it's a lure itself. Ah, I found one. Ah, anything else? Am I going crazy? Did I forget another one? Is the OCD acting up again? No? Okay. Let's go back into it. Uh, another skeleton type here. Uh, Random rotation. Ah, have the different skeletons, about three and three. Ah, random rotation. Just all over the place. They rapidly devour what they have. Uh, you can have a skeletal hand. Uh, ooh, that's not a bad idea. Denoting that uh, over here in the end... There are a few skeletons that are a bit, a bit wider, a bit more fresh, so to say. That's about five feet, yes. There's a, there's a few skeletons that have been, looks like uh, residents that have been freshly mounted to the cold stone. Uh, you could have this be a skeleton trap as well. Uh, there could be a lich in here. You could have there be an ooze trap. That would work as well. The dungeon's inhabitants. Uh, keeping their captives, the captured prey alive. Put them in here to feed their oozes. But there wouldn't be any bones left. Or, at least, the bones would be the last to go. <laughs> oozes are fun that way. Anything else of interest in here? No. Skulls. Waste. Waste skull, a stack of bones. Nah, that works out pretty well. Uh, we could have like a tortured body. No, I think we're doing good on the body standpoint. Works out fairly well. It, it doesn't have to be extremely decorated to be anything. Again, you can just use this to be as much as you want. Uh, they probably wouldn't be entirely that clustered. Uh, go. Just have them sporadic around the room. Yeah. That works. Give it a, a room uh, just sporadically littered with intact bodies. Uh, none of them seem to have had a peaceful death. As you investigate, you find uh, lacerations, long lacerations on the femur bones. You find small teeth, many teeth marks, like as if something ate the flesh rendered from it. Uh, more accurately, you could probably tell from the three that have been tied up, they were most likely eaten alive, as you notice that some of the teeth marks are not even like, unlike the other ones, these are probably passed in here when they were deceased. These over here, most likely uh, yeah, most likely were, you notice the teeth marks jagged, un- uniform. They as if something twisted and turned at the end of it. A bit dark. A bit dark, but everything in D&D &D is dark. Especially if you play this in the Underdark. It could be a rogue 
And if you play an Underdark campaign like Out of the Abyss, you can add this into there and say, you found a, uh, a, a old ruin that seems to be at the bottom of a uh, ravine if you're passing along the uh, spider web ravine. You can say at the end, there's, there's a passageway off to the right. It seems manufactured, so to say. Ah, you could have a uh, dummy room down there. That wouldn't be too bad. Giving some distractions. I think this down here will be more of a distraction room. This is like a uh, doom room, distraction room. Uh, let's get some stones. Uh, the room, again, going back to the uh, Underdark setting, you can say uh, ancient ruin found out. You walk into it, immediately drop them into it, and it would lead out to whatever you want it to be. It could be a small little treasure hoard. Uh, it could be that the uh, it could lead to nothing. It could do a shortcut if they succeed in the encounters that they choose to. Uh, some random stones, yes. Give it some, uh, give it some, uh, color, collapsed earth in that area. Give it just, just even some random stones. Yeah, if they ever use the, uh, magic stone, my wizard has, as the, uh, it's a cat, is it a ketchup spell that turns, it turns a stone into magic you could cast it at people? Yes, yes, yes. But let's let's have this one down here be a uh, a decoy, so to say. Let's have it be not a fence post. I'm thinking dummies, archeries. Uh, you can have this be a post. Uh, you can have these be a board or a resting place. That works. Uh, the target board being over here. Going there, about every other, giving it a good uniformity. Be targeting boards, it seems like something in their old days used to uh, practice down here. Or they could be mounts for their cloakers when they have their conversations. Up to three mounts instead of target boards, immediately assumed as target boards, with the claws and the... Uh, Deep cuts into the board could be that the tails lashing into the board as they argue amongst each other. As they stand here as the maybe the three superior cloakers communicate compared to the underlings. The younger cloakers maybe of being normal medium size compared to the three large beasts that sound to mount. When they unfurl, they can shrink their size. Keep in mind they can disguise themselves as the cloak. Fire. No, they do not prefer fire. Flares, food, kitchen, footprints. They don't have feet. That's pointless. Games, gardens, gears, gears, ghost, grating, holes, houses. No, 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 no. I think we've gone too far. Cages. Ah, maybe get some rusty cages off to the side. There's some spikes, spikes. Chains. Ah, yes. Get some more... Uh, just a just a chain, just to uh, uh, add a little bit. Maybe we should get a table first. I'll put this down. Table. Uh, what kind of table would be good? Uh, standard kitchen. Let's just do a default table. Uh, being a little bit about f over five. There's a table over here. They are of intelligence. Uh, and they would be laid across, denoting. Uh, a little bit off to the side. Maybe not. Nah, that'd work just fine. Just uh, a little overlapping chains. Uh, somebody's got too tangled up in that regard. Looks like somebody set it off. So you can say that whatever uh, feasted in this area probably resides in this area. Or you could have a couple of these skeletons covered in cloaks. You lift up the cloak, find it's a bit heavier than usual. Uh, as you peer the body underneath, not paying too much to the uh, leather <laughs> of the cloak. You never notice it being the cloaker. It's not reacting initially at first. Uh, then if you immediately pick up the cloak... You attach it to yourself. Uh, if you try to investigate it further, again, they will attack you. Let's see. Would there be anything else over here? Uh, torture chamber. May not be a bad idea, but they don't torture. They eat. There's no need for torture. Cages. They wouldn't mind probably keeping a cage for prisoners. Uh, if you wish to have a rescue mission, so to say. You can have uh, 
a bent old rusty cage like these. Yeah, that would work. And the, uh, just housing an adventure or two. Yes. And they would then, you could have, like, your prisoners, like, if you're coming here for a rescue mission or a uh, escort mission in the middle of the combat, uh, one of the cloakers managed to uh, grapple and capture your escorts. They're too busy with the fight. They ran in here, threw them in the cage, and you got to fight more cloakers. Or this is your rescue mission in the first place. This is your reason for being here. You are here to rescue the princess and be done with it. This princess has gotten captured for the fifth time. I'm tired of it. We got to do it again. What are we, Mario? <laughs> Yes, that's what you are. Uh, it, this one doesn't really require a lot of decoration, does it? You, you keep things simple. You can add things to the imagination. You can use this as a uh, necromancer's cage. You can use this as a necromancer's lair. Having the uh, skeletons coming alive within the room. Uh, you can add more as you wish. You can add less. Not all of them will come alive because they're not exactly whole. Uh, you can have just the walking little head thing that bumps around behind people and tries to bite at their ankles to be hilarious. Uh, the claws denoting something has eaten recently. Uh, maybe more claws into... That's not a bad idea. Scratches. Denoting scratches in the hallway. Yes. We gotta get those scratches out of there. They do not like being confined in enclosed spaces. That's how I would do it. They being large creatures are trying to fly, they would be scratching, hurtling out. They not when chasing prey, however. They would stealthily glide like a manta ray hunting for its prey. Small fish, shrimp. Whatever Matt Razy, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not a marine biologist. But something feels missing. Maybe we can do something more down there. Uh, maybe a couple of more tied up pieces, perhaps. A target and target board. Mm. Huts, keeps. I gotta close these because they'll just start lagging it out. Lightning effects, market, mm, sci-fi, mushrooms, music, occult, peers, plants, shelves and cupboards, siege, yes, have a, that's the perfect thing to have, you know, the first thing you do after you get into a dungeon, start finding a bunch of skeletons, and there's a necromancer nearby, there has to be a necromancer nearby, so the first thing you do is you come around the corner, kill everything, you peer around the corner, and you notice... Uh, just darkness over here. As you start walking around, you throw a uh, stone that has been infused with light that you found over here. You threw it over here, and you find the wizard standing there, smiling, next to a cannon, loaded with grape shot, and you're in a corridor. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> if you want to really mess with people, do that. Make them have a dexterity saving throw. And, uh... Yeah, or you could just give them no warning at all and make them at disadvantage. Yes, and then you get the rogues and the monks that have the ability to survive a nuclear blast in the face because mechanics. I would say, for that system, if you can move out of the range of the explosion within one turn and back, then you can dodge it. So a fireball taking zero damage... I mean, that's actually a fairly big radius. Uh, but it's, you can still technically move out and then potentially move back. I'm not, not counting dashes and everything, but I mean, ropes can dash as a bonus. Monks, shadow monks can just woo, 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 teleport and move like several miles per second. Break the sound barrier. Taverns ends. Ooh, maybe some decorations. Keys. Ah, they wouldn't care so much about keys as they would latch their preys, or they wouldn't be the ones latching their preys. So maybe they would be a, uh, a pile of keys. There'd be a small, a small key sitting right there. Just, just a little bit of key, a little bit of detail, a little bit of detail for the gate. Uh, a tavern item decoration. More trophies, yes, have a dragon's head for tapestry. Temple, tents. 
torches. Maybe. No, they wouldn't like torches. They don't like lights. Uh, you could add some traps into these corridors if you wanted to make it something like ancient dungeon kind of thing. Uh, make them roll like a saw blade trap. Uh, you could go even as simple as having a bear trap if you wanted to. I would like to... Uh, I mean, that's fine, but I guess I'll not. Yeah. And then I'll just delete you. Ah, no, how dare you. Good. I knew it. It is trying to kill me. Okay. So, simplicity at its finest. It's not a complicated map. There's some scratches denoting beasts who do not like confined spaces. You could use this for dark metals as well. They like to hide in the ceilings and devour the attached to the heads of their prey. You can have this be a multitude of different things. But it works out for an intelligent species due to the chains, the ambush profile that they have. Is there anything else I'm forgetting? Probably not. Grapple, they've got the Moan, the Phantasms. Uh, keep in mind, you would like to have these rooms be a bit on the taller side, because 40 feet of flight, they can do the hit-and-run nonsense. A wizard, a ranger, all that stuff would probably have a field day doing that. But not when it's got the Phantasms going on, and the fact that they can, their cloaks can survive if they succeed on that saving throw. But Air of Effects would make it so that, uh, I would say... Uh, for area of effects, let's 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 do some ruling here. So, whenever any creature targets the creature with an attack or harmful spell, while a duplicate remains, that creature rolls randomly to determine if it targets a creature or the duplicates. A creature is unaffected by this magical effect; if it can't see or relies on it. Duplicate uses the cloakers they see. So, what would happen is, in that case, uh. Even if it's a fireball and it hits everything in the area, it being a magical, arcane effect, then what basically it would be a get down, Mr. President kind of feeling. And a fireball, it would deliberately tank the fireball on the face. If it succeeded on the saving throw, then all of the rest of the illusions and the original cloaker, and it, survives. Uh, it, it's, that's a very tricky thing. Uh, it would depend if it was later or earlier in the campaign. If it was earlier in the campaign and it's going to be already a tough fight, I would say that big effects like Fireball and stuff like that would affect the original body. But if a phantom took it, fail or no, then the original body would take half damage. Uh, if he managed to hit the actual cloaker, I would say roll it like normal. because And then the uh, phantasms would have no effect. It's one of those things where it just substitutes, and it's up to the GM discretion. I mean, this entire game goes either way. But, I'm a little bit content with this. I may use this for uh, my own campaign here soon. They're on their way to a ruined capital, after all. But, uh, that's going to be the end of this one. It's uh, a little bit on the longer side for me rambling, and it's mostly me just trying to fix the stupid walls. But, I appreciate y'all here listening to me. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more. Leave a like if you like it. Leave a dislike if you didn't like it. And tell me why below. Uh, or just tell me why you hate my life. And I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, just do, yeah, well, yeah, you know, you're you. And I'll see you guys next time. I'll be, I decided that I'm going to be uploading these things once a day on weekdays. So that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So, and you guys will have these once a day. I will potentially be doing bonus episodes, depending on how far I get. Maybe the Dragon Devil episode will come up here soon. But, again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.